Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yen. Yeah, I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And welcome to, I suppose, a different kind of video here in the office. That's right, not in the Stamford Bridge studio, in my humble little office. With a lapel mic, going back to the old school. Uh, not standing against the wall, but there you can see the wall and the Chelsea artwork, I suppose, up there. I did want to talk about this in a sort of isolated piece of con uh, content. Um, there's a great deal of uh, turbulence and uncertainty at the moment with Chelsea Football Club. You know, um, whether it's football pundits, rival fans, Chelsea fans, everyone's recognising a very peculiar time. And an expected, to a degree, exodus of players. Um, of course, headliners are Mason Mount, Manchester United, Mateo Kovacic, uh, Manchester City, and seemingly Kai Havertz to Arsenal Football Club. Now we can talk about those in isolation, but we'll also talk about the grand scheme of things, how we got here and why we are doing this. So strap yourselves in. I thank you for joining me. I'd encourage you to drop a like on the video to support the content uh, that I make for you. And if you enjoy it, why not subscribe, eh? You might like more videos. I upload multiple videos a day often, and if you enjoy the content, hit that bell, baby. All right then, let's start. So let's talk about this. Chelsea have long had a problem growing. And yes, this is talked about by mostly Chelsea fans, but people who have a bit more of a keen eye on, on the game, perhaps watching Chelsea a little bit more cerebrally, I suppose, a bit more lucid to the scenario of Chelsea Football Club. For long times, we were, of course, Roman Abramovich and Vibes. Galactico managers and players and although it worked for a long time the football climate was changing and Success demanded infrastructure Essentially, uh, you know a bit more Liverpool Manchester City, but certainly Manchester City Yes, they've spent a lot of money, but they've been magnificent with how they've spent it and yes They might have done some stuff wrong, but let's just in isolation talk about the football success Smart, bro. They were smart. They were smart in the infrastructure, building behind the scenes, the multi-club network, the preparation for a good manager, maybe the greatest manager, but a good manager. Now, long, for long have I wanted to emulate this. As a Chelsea fan, I've enjoyed success. You know, I'm 34 years old, so, you know, perhaps not always profound, <laughs> amazing success, but success, right? And that was changing. Everyone could see how no longer you could just sort of throw cash at certain players, get good managers, and sort of work with drama and theatre. It was yeah, it was it was becoming more and more transparent. You needed infrastructure, and I've been calling for that, and I've been yearning for that. You know, since you know far before Bowley Clear Lake era, and when Todd Bowley won the Chelsea bid. And uh, it was, you know, he built this board of appropriate people in different fields and, you know, put Finkelstein and Sharon on the board, these Chelsea fans, because they wanted a Chelsea fan feeling the presence of Todd Bowley and, you know, eventually a bit more Iqbali going to games, wanting to watch their team, wanting to watch a team that they've built succeed. Everything you want from owners, really. Presence, um, you know, an idea of, of fans, you know, keeping the fans in mind, essentially, as well as... Um, not just attending, investing, really throwing, you know, and saying we want to win. We're not here to just take dividends. We're not going to be absent owners in different countries. We're going to be here. We're going to spend money. We're going to build a multi-club model. We want a, you know, an infrastructure with recruitment people, footballing directors, sporting directors to support the manager. And then we want, you know, this multi-club network where we can put out players to develop and, you know, ultimately do what we're not doing, ultimately avoid what we're doing now in terms of spending ridiculous amounts of money on the likes of Caicedo, potentially, and Enzo Fernandez, who were both bought for absolutely nothing only recently. And, you know, together, they're going to be around £200 million or something ridiculous. So, it's difficult. I absolutely, like every single, not just Chelsea fan, person on the planet, recognise the 
crap show that Chelsea has been this season. There's a couple of shining lights and perhaps reasons to be hopeful, but generally the season's been a disaster and there were loads of mistakes made on the way. Many that could have been avoided, perhaps some that couldn't have been avoided due to just an expectation of teething issues of new you know, foreign owners that will learn on the job to a degree and have the best intentions. Of course, whether it's, you know, Thomas Tuchel, of course, didn't get on with them, but he very much said they're working very hard and they're very present and want to be involved. Graham Potter spoke, you know, glowingly of them, saying, you know, their ambitions are incredible, they are good people. I know he's going to say that about his employers. But even Frank Lampard, who was only here fleetingly and didn't have to say anything good about them and just wants what's best for Chelsea, he says, yeah, these guys are ambitious and it's good that they're hanging around. He, you know, sung their praises. He, he, he didn't have to, he was gone in no time, you know, and he was losing games or whatever, like, the intention is there, and I think that's really important, I think people need to recognise that, they need to recognise in this, fans need to recognise in this really difficult time of two, two really profoundly difficult things, being shit, <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and spending all this sort of money and, you know, wastefulness and, and whatnot, a lot of this has been a long time coming. The aforementioned Roman Abramovich era in vibes, the squad, you know, many journalists have done articles on this, how this squad last year was remnants of five different coaches that all played different styles and these players are all on different wages and they've all got different um, ambitions and agendas and intentions. and. The culture, and, and, and just as important as the ethos, the tactics, the formations, you know, the footballing philosophies, just as important is the culture. And I know it's a little bit wanky to say that, but it's true. The footballing culture, and I don't mean like Cobham from the ground up, which is great. You know, it's great to have academy players in the team. Many managers would recognise that. Um, but it's a culture of how you act on the training ground, how you behave, how, you know, you represent a club. And we used to have that, we did, in the golden Lampard, John Terry era, but it was fizzling away, the sort of like remnants of it was getting more and more diluted to the point of collapse. And we were papering over the cracks for a long time. Thomas Tuchel did magnificent work, he won the Champions League, really good cup manager, and we seemingly had a really good cup team for a 3-4-3 formation or a 3-5-2, whatever he played, you know. Um, and we, we demonstrated that not just by winning the, um, the, the Champions League, but getting to a bunch of finals under Tuchel, granted, you know, losing them apart from the uh, Champions League, which is the one you would have chosen, of course. And maybe that was a character thing in the final moments. But um, yeah, it was ultimately papering over the cracks of this dysfunctional group of players that no longer followed a collective ethos that were sort of grasping on the echoes of the greats from the previous decade and this season granted it's a high octane version but it's just chickens coming home to roost everything collapsing no one knows what we are anymore um, and you know in terms of continuity there is none and there's no culture to grab onto anymore like the final the last bastion of Chelsea culture and greatness is gone and it needs to be rebuilt so enter Maurizio Pochettino here's an opportunity to do that I think he is a good candidate for that in terms of I, I don't necessarily think he's a born winner we'll have to see touch wood fingers crossed but you know there's two things that he definitely can be recognized for and that's developing young talent of which we have a lot so big tick and appropriate maybe alone that would be enough but also generating a culture in a club and it's so important man it's so important especially when you don't have it at all which we don't he has the opportunity to do that but just like losing games just like getting it wrong on transfers and wasting money, Aubameyang, Kukurea, uh, Kula Bali, um, I want to be a little bit more lenient with the likes of Raheem Sterling. And yes, we've made good signings like Enzo, I think Madueke, Badia Shield are really good signings. Um, I think Mudrick's got immense raw potential, but to the degree the jury's out. And of course, you know, Malagusto should be good cover. Chelsea should rightly be very, very highly praised for their scouting and then signing of the likes of Cesare Casade and Andre Santos. So it's not all been bad, but we're at a point now when we all understand we need this rebuild. We all understand we need this refreshment. We all understand that we need everything ripped up and start again. But there's 
there's, I've lost focus, and there's painful moments, you know, uh, let me see if I can find my face again, there's painful moments here, and this is, to a degree, I'll, I'll rank these in, in my personal, uh, the way I see it, Kovacic to Man City, I don't really have an issue with that, he won't start for Chelsea, he's an absolute baller, He's an absolute baller. He could be utilised a lot. And had we maybe been in Europe with more games, maybe it would be a bit more painful. But it is going to be Enzo plus one. And that's the same with N'Golo Kante leaving. Like, N'Golo Kante will leave us with a heavy heart, but him going to Saudi, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you can thank him for his service. And the Premier League as a whole can salute him for his work with Chelsea uh, and, you know, of course, Leicester City and, you know, winning the Champions League and the World Cup. It's loads of personal accolades. So Kante isn't really an issue. Uh, Jorginho is in his 30s. Looks like he's going to leave Arsenal anyway. Um, but Kovacic, 29, going on 30. He makes the best team in the world slightly stronger or maybe the same depending on their outgoings. I can deal with that, especially as it would represent good value selling within the league. Chelsea maintain a relationship with City after buying Raheem Sterling. For I still deem, by the way, a good deal for us. The 47 million for... Uh, an England international forward that was like 27 years old. It's got over 100 Premier League goals. A big, big star for England. Professional, rarely in injured. You know, even if he's underwhelmed, the whole team is underwhelmed. I maintain that's still a good deal. And you probably could do well under Pochettino's coaching. So I don't think we've been like fleeced by City at all. I think they'll get a relatively good deal in terms of the midfielder version. Probably a bit less money. Like 35 million, 40 million euros, 35 million pounds, that is. And I'm okay with that. You know, it was, we were always, there, people like Kovacic because he's silky, he's talented, he's a bit of a Rolls Royce. So him going to a better team, but you kind of get it, you think about it. Now, Kai Havertz to Arsenal. This is rough because he's one of those players that, in terms of his profile, you wondered if Maurizio Pochettino. Could have got more out of him. I, I hate making the Deli Ali comparison because it's quite unsexy because he's a bit more, he seems more cultured and Galactica, of course, Real Madrid won him. But I, people forget how many people wanted Deli Ali at the time. That second striker, Cam Roll, is Pochettino's like specialty. I'm just checking the, the time there. Um, so you think, oh, what could have you done? You know, but Nkuku's coming in to start. Let's be honest, mate. He doesn't, he's probably not going to start as a striker. We've got Bruyer, maybe Nicola Jackson starting as a striker's. Nkuku will start behind. Um, if he gets injured, of course, it would immediately be Havertz or Mount, who looks like he's not going to stay. But Chelsea have got £28 million left on the books to clear for Kai Havertz in terms of amortisation. There's that word again. And it looks like Arsenal will pay like £62 million for him. Chelsea will be rubbing their hands together and they'll be alleviating themselves from big wages. Now, what hurts is he wants to go to Arsenal. He wants to go to Arsenal. Uh, Bayern Munich are out there, but this report he'd prefer to go to Arsenal. So before you get all angry at that, um, Chelsea probably putting him up for sale. He is up for sale, so you can't get too angry at him of choosing a destination where the club will get money for him. I think he likes living in London. He's settled here with his girlfriend, dogs and stuff. Um, he probably recognises he get good money at Arsenal. He likes Chelsea. He came to Chelsea for the career opportunity, not because he's a diehard Chelsea fan, lest we forget. He might be a little bit peeved that he won Chelsea the Champions League and then goes to the London rival. But at the end of the day, it's his career. He's not like a born Chelsea fan. And he probably recognises that he's given something to Chelsea that has been that won't be forgotten. And um, he's allowed to do what he wants, really. It sucks. It sucks a lot more than Kovacic, but I get it. When you sell big players on big wages in this day and age, in the current footballing climate, you have to sell within the Premier League. You just have to. You have because that's where the money is. Unless Real Madrid actually accepted the Kai Havertz price, unless Bayern paid a bit more or whatever, it's Premier League or bust, man. It sucks because we all hate Arsenal. Or Chelsea fans hate Arsenal. There might be some Arsenal fans watching. I don't hate you. I just hate the club. <laughs> <laughs> so that sucks and for me top of the tree of course is Mason Mount I think in terms of the player himself and the productivity um, 
like I say the player himself is in, you know he's intelligent he represents the club well he's very very professional um, he's got so much experience he's been on half the wage of Ruben Loftus Cheek for his entire Chelsea first team tenure despite being a you know first name on the team sheet for every manager you know being the first player to get double digits with goals and assists in the league since Eden Hazard despite being a midfielder being tactically available and being really good at ta tactical uh, retention, you know, like information retention from the gaffer. Out of everyone, I think Mason Mount would be the biggest loss for, well, for Chelsea, for me as a fan who, who loves the player, but I think most saliently moving forward for our club's success, he'd be the biggest loss for Maurizio Pochettino, who reportedly would love to work with him. Uh, Chelsea have clearly botched up the deal and if he goes to Manchester United, much like Kai Havertz going to Arsenal, I feel like it's going to rivals. Kovacic, I don't see City as a rival at the moment, but I do see United as a rival and probably Arsenal. We don't know what they're going to do next season. Like Kai is probably going to play as an attacking number eight. I don't think he's going to be a striker. He might do, but we'll see. But Mason Mount to Manchester United in a resurgent Man United he'll make them so much better. And because also he, he's a leader and, um, he'll, you know, Ten Hag will like him because he's, you know, in terms of tech, technical tactics, he'll know exactly what he wants. He'll press really hard. He'll get the odd goal and assist and he can move around the pitch and feel comfortable in different positions. And uh, these, these moments where Man United flop and collapse, you know, you know, they've had a really good season, but they still had some embarrassing results. Mount's a good character on the pitch. I think he'd help contribute against you know, shipping 10 goals to so-and-so, whatever, you know, Man United do. We'll have to see what happens with Mount. I do think he's probably going to go. But what this video ultimately is about, and I want to bring it home now, is this is a long time coming. Um, we're going to have to start again. And to start again, everyone's going to have to lose these players that they all like. Their individual preferences. You know, Kovacic has got a heavy following. Jorginho had a heavy following. Uh, you know, Kai Havertz and Mason Mount, all four of these players have heavy, heavy followings. Kante, massive. Like, you know, I think every Chelsea fan agrees Kante is ridiculous. The only thing that could be worse, I think, than all of this, that everyone, you know, like uh, it, it, that would unify and agree would be the worst thing ever is say if Reese James signed for Tottenham, because <laughs> everyone's like, yeah, Reese James, maybe our best player, even though he's a right back, you know. And if he if he went to um to Spurs or something, that would be you know too much. Um, but it's rough, and fans are all going to be angry, they're all going to be upset, they're all going to be feeling like this visceral um, displeasure in, the, in their gut. But ultimately, it's a long time coming, and it, when they say it's going to get worse before it gets better, this is ultimately a getting worse. Finishing 12th, a lot of our favourite players going, but regenerating revenue, bringing in infrastructure, a coach, and starting again, and not having Europe, just focusing on ourselves. And having that comfort of knowing that the, the owners are heavily interested in investing and making us win. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. It's been a long video. I'm going to wrap up here. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And see you later.